Hi, now this is a follow-up exercise to an earlier tutorial where I showed you how to solve equations like these. If you haven't seen that tutorial and want help, you should find that there's a link here that will take you back to that tutorial. Or better still, go on my website and you'll see it above this video. So, I'll give you a moment or two just to pause the video. Come back when you're ready and I'll take you through the work solutions. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So for this first one, remember what we need to do is remove this constant first of all, just to leave us with this x term on the left hand side. And to do this, what we need to do is add 2 to both sides of our equation. I'm going to write this in red, not that you have to obviously, but uh, it just demonstrates that I've done the same thing to both sides. And what this does then is it just leaves us with the term 3x because minus 2 add 2 just gives us 0, 3x add 0 is 3x. And then 13 add 2 is going to be 15. And when we get an equation of this form, we now do the same thing to both sides, which is to get rid of the 3, the value in front of the x. And we do that not by subtracting 3 from both sides, but dividing both sides by that value there, 3, in this example. And what that gives us is 3 into 3 goes once. It leaves us with x x equals 15 divided by 3, which is 5. Okay, x equals 5. In the next one, number 2, I chose this one just to put the x term on the right-hand side of the equals. So I could either swap it around and write 5x plus 2 equals 6 and carry on something like I did here, or I can just leave it as it is. I copy down my equation, 6 equals 5x plus 2. What I need to do is get rid of the plus 2 here. And the only way I get rid of that plus 2 is to subtract 2 from both sides. So we subtract 2. And that means that 2 take away 2 is 0, leaving us with 5x. So we've got 6 take away 2 is 4, and it equals the 5x. At this stage, all I need to do is get rid of the 5, and I divide both sides by 5. So we've got 4 equals 5x, I divide both sides by the 5, and those 5's cancel out, just leaving me with 1x over 1, or simply x. And in this example, I bring the x to the left-hand side, and I've got 4 divided by 5. And I'm going to leave it as 4 fifths, okay? Just leave it as an exact value like that. In number 3, 5 plus 7x equals 24. What I need to do is remove the 5 here. You'll notice with this example, I've got my x term, a positive x term, and I've just got it as the second term in. But nonetheless, I need to get rid of that 5. And I copy my equation down, I've got 5 plus 7x equals 24, and I'm going to get rid of that 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides. And what that leaves me with is just the 7x, because 5 take away 5 is 0, 7x plus 0 is just 7x. So we've got therefore 7x equals 24 take away 5, which is 19. And I now need to get rid of that 7. I divide both sides by 7. So we've got 7x equals 19. I divide by the 7. And you'll see with this example, I picked this purely because I wanted to demonstrate an awkward fraction here again. So what we've got is therefore x equals and Keep it in fractions rather than decimals. You only have to round this up if you do do it on the calculator. We've got 19 sevenths. 19 sevenths. 7 goes into 19 twice. 
And that leaves me with a remainder of five. So I've got five sevenths. Two and five sevenths then. With number four, with this one, I wanted to introduce negative numbers here on the constant term. It doesn't change things though. We need to get rid of this constant to leave me with the x term here. So we'll copy down the equation 5 equals minus 6 plus 4x. So to get rid of minus 6, to make it 0, I have to add 6 to both sides. So we've got 5 plus 6 equals minus 6 plus 4x plus 6. So we therefore have 5 plus 6, which is 11, equals, and we're left with 4x because minus 6 plus 6 is 0, 4x plus 0 is 4x. Now, I need to get rid of the 4 from in front of the x. We've done this many times over now, okay? We've done it here, getting rid of the 3. We've done it here, getting rid of the 7. So I just do the same here. I divide both sides by 4. So we've got 11 equals 4x, we divide both sides by 4. The 4's cancel out, 4 into 4 goes 1, 4 into 4 goes 1 there, leaving me with x. And so what I have is therefore x equals 11 quarters. 11 quarters is 2 and 3 quarters. Right, with number 5, now what I'm going to do in these two examples is just demonstrate that by now you most probably will be getting fed up just writing in these red parts okay we should be seeing understanding what we're doing to both sides of our equation so with these two examples I'm going to just go straight in okay and leave the red parts out so with 8x minus 3 equals 7 what I want to do is get rid of the minus 3 so I add 3 to both sides. And if I add 3 to both sides, I therefore have 8x equals 7 add 3, which is 10. OK. Now I need to get rid of the 8. So I divide both sides now by 8, leaving me with 1x, x. OK. 8x divided by 8 just leaves me with the x. And then I've got 10 divided by 8. In fact, I'll just write that in, okay? What is 10 divided by 8? 10 eighths. It goes into 10 once, so you've got one whole one, two left over, so you've got one and two eighths. And with two eighths, that cancels, reduces down to one quarter. So you've got x equals one and one quarter. Now in number six, 11 equals four plus three x. With this one, I need to get rid of my constant here, the 4, just leaving me with the x term. So to get rid of the 4, I need to subtract 4 from both sides. Remember, this is a plus 4 here, OK? So we're not looking at this plus here. We're just looking at the value of this. It's plus 4. So we need to subtract 4 from both sides. If I do that, I therefore have 11 take away 4, which is going to give me 7. And if I take 4 from 4 plus 3x, I'm just going to be left with 3x. Now I need to get rid of the 3, so I divide both sides by 3. And that's going to give me 7 over 3 equals x. I'm going to turn this round, OK? x equals 7 over 3, 7 thirds. And what are 7 thirds? Well, that's going to be 2 whole ones and one third. Okay, so that's given you an idea of how to do these and how we can go about with practice starting to reduce the amount of work that we put down here. Okay, just by leaving out the red bits. Now, in my next video in this series, what we'll be looking at is questions where the x term is not a positive term. You'll notice in all of these examples that I've done, the x term has always been a positive term. And uh, hopefully you'll look at those if you want to know how to go about solving those kinds of questions. All right.